Hello, guys. Good evening. Hello, hello. Hello. Good evening. How are you, Carla? Fine. You're fine? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Good evening, Maurice. I can see that we also Good have evening. Claudia. We also have Pablo. Okay, good evening, guys. So I hope you have had a great day. All right, so we are going to start with today's class. And well, we are going to start with today's agenda. So we are going to start with the warm up. We are going to continue with the grammar, which is unit three. And we are going to talk about superlatives. Yeah. We also have a speaking time. We have one grammar quiz, we have listening quiz, and we also have the wrap up at the end of the class, all right? So we're going to start by reading an article about countries, yeah? So let's see. Uh, Maurice, can you please help us reading the number one and two? Okay, so those two paragraphs. Then Carla, please, three and four. And let me see, Pablo, five and six. Okay, go, Maurice. The, the Vatican, Monaco, to value. Yeah. The Vatican, mm -hmm. this place is spiritual center for the Good one evening. billion. Good evening, Vladimir. One billion, billions people around the world, but with a population of only 700. It is the smallest country in the world. And second, uh, mm -hmm. the United States, okay. a fat full meal in the capital city cost more than a uh, dollar mm -hmm. a cup of coffee in the second biggest city cost more than seven dollar okay there are some watermelon with a cost uh fifty dollar mm -hmm. this is the most expensive country in the world Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, three and four. Uh, I think is Iceland. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Iceland, this is the coldest place in the world where people live. In winter, it is often less 58 Fahrenheit or lower. It is dangerous to go outside without at least two pairs of socks, mm -hmm. two pairs of pants, a work hat, thick gloves, and a very warm coat. Uh, Qatar, in, in this country, salaries are more or less similar to salaries in Western Western nations, but because of the lack of person taxes, net income is usually mm -hmm. usually much higher. This this is the richest country in the world. Okay. Yes, five and six. Okay. Um... New Zealand. This country has a one of the, of the longest murder rates in the world. The local people have a lot of respect for foreign years. Mm -hmm. And there are no political problems. This is the safest country in the world for travel. Okay. 
Russia. Okay. It take about the, uh, 15 days to drive from side of this country to the other side. This place is nearly 10 times bigger than Mexico. Oh. It is the biggest country in the world. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. So as you can see right here, we have different places, different countries around the world, right? So you have given me your uh, answers and most of them are correct. So what I need to focus on is basically, as you may see, we have highlighted some specific words. And as you may see, those are superlative adjectives. Yeah. So superlative adjectives. For example, the smallest, the most expensive, the coldest, the richest, the lowest, and the biggest. Yeah. As you can see, we have uh, superlative adjectives right here in this short reading. Yeah. So it says the first place is a spiritual center for 1 billion people around the world. Which country is this? It's going to be the Vatican. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So what about this one? It says that a fast food meal in the capital city costs more than eight dollars so this one is the most expensive country in the world do you think this is the united states japan or saudi arabia What do you think? Any idea? Uh -huh. Maybe. Okay. So, the most expensive country in the world, okay, according to some studies, um, it is going to be, let me see. A, okay, Norma. All right, it is going to be Japan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Imagine that there are some watermelons which cost $50. It is really expensive. Because uh, the watermelon have a form. A uh, yes, okay, it could be. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Uh, give me one second, guys, okay? But yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's continue. So it says, number three, okay, this is the coldest, the coldest place in the world, the coldest. Yakusha, Siberia, Greenland, or Iceland? Iceland. <laughs> Iceland. Okay. Any other opinion? Yeah, the coldest, the coldest place. It is going to be Yakusha, Siberia. And that is the coldest place in the world where people live. In winter, it is often 58 Fahrenheit or lower. It is dangerous to go outside without at least two pairs of socks, two pairs of pants, a warm hat, 
thick gloves and a very warm coat. Yes. Okay. So what about number four? This is the richest, the richest country in the world. Mm -hmm. Which is the richest country? Qatar. Qatar. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. What about number five? It says that this country is the one that has one of the lowest motor rates in the world. That means that that country is really safe. Uh -huh. It is? What do you think? Sweden? Mm, no, it is going to be New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yes, that country is really safe. It is. Mm -hmm. And now, which is the biggest, the biggest country in the world? Of course, it is going to be. Huh? It is Russia. Russia. Russia is the biggest country in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Russia. Okay, guys. So the main purpose, um, okay, so the main purpose is actually you focusing on superlative adjectives because that is the main topic for today superlative adjectives okay so let's move as you remember guys we already covered comparatives and today we are going to continue with superlatives so which is going to be um the superlative adjective for expensive something really important is that we have we have rules right so we are going to cover the rules in a minute. But right now, which is, um, what do you think is the superlative for expensive? So the comparative, more expensive, and the superlative? Most expensive. The most expensive. Excellent, okay. The most expensive, that is correct. What about cold, which is the superlative? The yeah, coldest. 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 Yes, coldest. Very good. What about rich? It is going to be the richest, right? And we need to add the, yes, the richest. What about safe? Uh -huh. The superlative is going to be the safest yeah. and what about for big it is going to be the biggest right yeah you see mm -hmm. so let's move and let's start then with grammar and with the definition okay so we have superlative adjectives um maurice can you please read the definition Okay, superlative adjectives. Superlative adjectives are used to describe an adjective with is up the upper or lower limit of quality. Yes. It's tallest, the the smallest, the fastest, the highest. Mm -hmm. They are used in sentences where are subject in compare to a group of objects. Of objects, thank you. All right, so guys, the superlative adjectives are basically those that we used to describe an object which is at the upper or lower limit of quality. 
And as you see the examples, which are in red, we have the tallest, the smallest, the fastest, the highest, yeah? So in this case, we have also rules. We have different rules. The same thing that we did for the comparatives, we need to do it for the superlatives, yeah? So we have the one syllable adjectives. Nelly, can you please help us reading all of that? Okay. Um, Forming regular superlatives. Uh, one syllable adjectives. Add um, EST for the superlative if the adjective has a consonant plus single vowel plus consonant spelling. The final consonant must uh, be double before adding the ending. Adjective uh, fat, comparative fatter, and superlative the fat, fattest. Adjective big, comparative bigger, and superlative the biggest. Adjective hot, comparative uh, hotter, superlative the hottest. Adjective sad, comparative sadder, and superlative the saddest. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So those are the one syllable adjectives, right? So those are the ones in which we add EST. Yeah. We have a consonant, a single vowel, and then consonant. And we also must double the final consonant. As you remember with the comparatives, the same thing for the superlative. The only thing that we need to mention is that we add T-H-E, that means the, yeah? So we have fat, fatter, the fattest, big, bigger, the biggest, and so on, right? Do not forget this the, because it is important when it comes to superlatives, okay? The same thing that, as you remember, for comparatives is really important, done, right? So for the superlative is the. So then we also have the ones that end in the letter Y, yeah? So Jose, can you please help us reading all of this? Yes, teacher. Thank you. For, for adjectives ending in Y, change the Y to an I before adding the ending. Adjective, happy. Comparative is happier. And the superlative, happiest, lucky, luckier, luckiest, pretty, prettier, prettiest, tidy, tidier, tidiest. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So what we do with the words that end in Y, we add I and we add EST. Yeah. And remember, we need to add the, the happiest, the luckiest, the prettiest, the tidiest. Right. So what is a synonym for tidy? What was tidy? Mm -hmm. You don't remember? Tidy means clean, organized, neat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Um, can you give me an example? All right. Can you give Can you give me an example using um, the happiest or the luckiest or the prettiest or the tidiest? Give me an example. A sentence. Mm -hmm. Using the superlative, not compared. Superlative. Think about an example. Mm -hmm. Could be funny and superlative funniest. Okay. Yes. Now give me give me a sentence. Oh.
Uh, me teacher okay go i am the happiest man in the world when i see my children after uh, job after my job after your job all right after a very uh tiring day okay very good excellent mm -hmm. very good okay so now give me an example sentence guys using Either the fattest or the biggest or the hottest or the saddest. Give me an example sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. La Unión is the horror depart the hottest department in El Salvador. Okay. So, yes. Um I would just uh, say that instead of department we can say city, okay? But but yes. Okay. Very good. And that is true. Can you imagine? Well, right now in San Salvador at least the ones that are from San Salvador, it is hot, right? So, in La Unión probably is hotter, right? So yes, La Unión is the hottest, I think, city. I'm not sure, right? I think that yes, it is the hottest, okay? So very good. Now we also have the ones that are long adjectives. George, can you please help us reading the definition and the examples? Three or more sites. Syllables. Syllables. Uh, syllables. Yes. Adjectives with three or more syllables form the superlative by putting most in front. Adjective, important. Comparative, more important. Superlative, the most important. Adjective, expensive. Comparative, more expensive. Superlative, the most expensive. Perfect. Yes. Okay, thank you, George. Um, we have the ones that in in well that are kind of long, long adjectives, we call them. So we have important, expensive, delicious, amazing, etc. Right, wonderful, etc. So in this case, um, the rule is that we are going to add the most, the most, the most important uh person in my life is my mom. Yeah. The most expensive uh, cell phone around the world is, I don't know, right? But yes. So in this case, superlative. Yeah, the most important, the most expensive, the most delicious, the most amazing, um, the most uh, generous, etc. Yeah. So those are superlatives. So, Maurice, if I ask you right now, who is the most important person in your life? Uh, this mommy is the most my wife. Okay. My wife is the most important person in my life. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Let me ask, um, okay. So George, who is the most important person in your life? Well, I have many person, but um, my, the most important person is my mom. Okay. The most important person is your mom. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, Juan Jose, who is the most important person in your life? The most important person in my life is my wife. Oh, my wife is the most important person in my life. Very good. Yeah, both are correct. Perfect. 
Um, what about you? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, what about you, Carla? Who is the most important person in your life? Okay. Yes. Mm. No. Sorry. Don't worry, okay? It's okay. I think it's my mom. <laughs> okay. So the person in my life is my mom. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Carla. And um, let me see. Um, okay. Emerson, who is the most important person in your life? Most important person in my life is my son. Is your son. Okay. Perfect. Um, Kenya, who is the most important person in your life? For me, the most important is my family, is the group. I don't have one person. Perfect. Okay. Very good. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's continue. Let's continue. And now let's talk about irregular comparatives and superlatives, right? So in this case, as you remember, we have better, worse, less, more, farther, Right, we cover those when we talk about comparatives, but right now we are going to cover superlatives. Yeah. So we have the base form, good, the best, superlative, bad, the worst, little, the least. Yeah. So el menos, the least, significa el menos. So much the most, el más. De aquí viene el more and the most, miren, de los mismos adjetivos. So far, farther, and the farthest. For example, el menos. Um, for example, okay. The least importance, important subject in school is Probably PA, well, but no, that one is really important. Physical education, right? So, but okay. So that is an example. The least important subject at school is physical education. Let's say that one. But just for you to see, el, el menos importante, la menos importante, okay? And then we also have the most important subject at school could be science, just saying, right? So the least, the most. So what is the meaning of the farthest? Yeah, you remember that far is lejos, right? Farther, mm -hmm. comparative and the farthest, El más lejos. Okay. Then we also have the best and the worst. Mm -hmm. Give me an example using the best. The best. The football is the best sport in the world. Okay. Football is the best okay, sport around the world. Could be. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you have any question about superlative adjectives? Remember, we have short adjectives and those are just made by adding da and est. The fattest, yeah. 
And then we also have the ones that end in the letter Y. And we follow the rule that says that we are going to remove the letter Y and we are going to add I E S T. Okay. And don't forget that we need to add the T H E, right? The. The. Yeah. Don't forget about that. And we also have the long adjectives. What we do is that we add the most and we say the adjective. Yeah. And then we also have the irregular ones. So that means the ones that change. And we have the best, the worst, the least, the most, the farthest. Yeah, those are irregular. So now let's move and let's try to resolve those exercises. Okay, so we have number one. John is the tallest person in his family. What about number two? Saturday is... The best day to go shopping. Perfect. Okay. What about number three? Chinese is the most difficult language language in the world. Yes, Chinese is the most difficult language in the world, and that is true, right? Because they they make a lot of uh, symbols, right, and and different things. It is difficult. Yes. What about number four? August is the hottest month of the year. Yes. Of the year. Excellent. August is the hottest month of the year. I'm not really sure, right? But yes. So what about number five? Juliet is, is more beautiful. The more the or most the beautiful. Excellent. The most, because the it most is beautiful, yeah. the most beautiful woman I know. Number six, the Nile is the longest, the longest, the longest river in the world. That is correct. Seven, Everest is the highest. Mountain in the world. Excellent. So Everest is the highest mountain in the world. Perfect. Number eight. It was funniest. the funniest movie of the year. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Writing letter is. Slowest. Slow. Is, yeah. Is the slowest? Method of communication. Excellent. Writing a letter is the, the slowest method of communication. And that is true, right? So nowadays we all communicate through WhatsApp, through a messenger, through emails, through a call, right? Yes. What about number 10? Sunday is. The most, the most relaxing, relaxing day, of, day the of the week. Yes, and that is true, right? That is true. Sunday is the most relaxing day of the week. Uh -huh. Yes, guys. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So now let's move and let's try to write the superlative forms of these adjectives, which is the superlative for amazing? The most amazing. The most amazing. For beautiful? The most beautiful. The most beautiful. Dangerous? The most dangerous. Excellent. Easy? Easiest. The easier. The easiest. easiest. Very good. Number five, famous? The most famous? Yeah, the most famous. Number six, interesting. The most, the most interesting. interesting. 
Yes, the most interesting, right? So which is the most interesting book you have read? Which is the most interesting book you have read, guys? Mm -hmm. Do you like reading? No? No? Probably, maybe, could be. Okay, so number seven. Nice, which is the superlative. Mm -hmm. the nicest the nicest yes number eight which is the superlative of poor mm -hmm. poor the poorest the poorest Yes, poorest. And number nine, rich, which is the superlative. Uh, rich. The richest. Very good. Okay, guys. What I need to do is that I need to create four sentences with four adjectives using superlatives, okay? Four sentences. You decide from those nine, from those that we have right here, okay? So I need to create four sentences and send those sentences to the chat here in Zoom, okay? I'll give you six minutes for you to complete four sentences, right? Individually.
Okay. All right, so my sister thinks she's, she's, okay. Mm -hmm. I am, Maurice, you are missing the most. Okay, I'm going to. Uh -huh. okay. Le falta el, el da. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Things. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay, this is. Okay, Juan Jose, the first one, this is the most, okay? T-H-E. Okay, okay. Yeah, so number two, that girl is the most beautiful in the party, okay? Beautiful just with one L, okay? And the Bible, oh, just with one B, okay? The Bible is the most interesting book I have read. Okay, Australian's rivers are the most dangerous in the world. World with the letter L before D. Okay. Se me fueron varias letritas por ahí. Yes, okay. Okay, Carla, Michael Jackson is the most famous. Okay. Uh -huh. United States. State is the richest country in the world. Okay. Okay. A sleeping. A sleeping is the easiest activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. A sleeping, ING. Rihanna is the richest woman in the United States. Okay. A states with S. All right. Oh. Uh, Kenya, Tonkontin is the most dangerous airport in Central America. Okay. My daughter is the most important person. Yes, Tatiana. Albert Einstein is the most intelligent man in the world. Yes, Tatiana. Uh, okay, red roses are the most beautiful. Okay, just this mystery word. Okay. Who said the yellow scorpion is the most dangerous animal around the world? Okay. The dream catcher saga is the most interesting, or oh, are the most interesting books. Okay. Cristiano Ronaldo is the most famous person. Yes, Elon Musk is the richest person. A puppy is the most beautiful animal. Okay. Let's see. And we also have Emerson. The most amazing county, oh, country. Okay, the most amazing country is Japan. Okay. Uh, sharks, okay, sharks are the most dangerous, are the most dangerous animals in the planet, okay. The most interesting book, um, I can see, uh, okay, the most interesting book that I, that I read or that I have read is The Art of the World, okay. The person the most famous in, the most famous person in the world the most famous person in the world is Elon Musk okay and George Grecia is the most beautiful okay how do you say Grecia in English yes it's Greece excellent okay so Will Smith is the most famous actor, okay? The soccer, soccer, just soccer, okay? Soccer is the most amazing sport. The jungle is the most dangerous place, okay? She is the most beautiful girl, girl I have ever seen. The most dangerous time is winter, probably. Okay, Pablo, my, God, my wife is the most beautiful in the world. The most interesting book I read or I read is Juan Salvador Gaviota. The most amazing thing was 
when I saw my first daughter. Okay. When my first daughter was born, okay. It is not easier being a father. Mm, I mean, this one, number four, Pablo is not um, superlative, okay? You are comparing. But in this case, it should be, it is not easy. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or some of the most difficult things, or one of the most difficult things is uh, being a father, right? Yeah, you are using a uh, superlative. Okay, guys. Um, okay. Let's move. All right, let's move. And now let's actually uh, put the words in order to make sentences about the countries. This is your turn, okay? You are going to work with your team. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What you should do is that you need to rearrange. You need to rearrange those phrases to create a sentence. So you need to create eight sentences, all right? Eight sentences, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to work with your team. Please open the class and let's go to this part, okay? Where you need to rearrange. You need to use all of those words. Todas las palabras las tienen que utilizar para formar la oración, okay? But first, I'm going to take attendance because it's 8.49, okay? I'm going to take attendance. Um, okay, guys, say present, please, once you hear your name. Carlos Alberto Castro. Present, please. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Guerrero. Present. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eduardo Franco. Present, teacher. Thank you. Emerson Ulises. Yeah. Thank you. Jorge Antonio. Yeah, so George. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo. Present, teacher. Yeah. Juan Jose Herrera. Yes. Present, And teacher. Thank you. Karen, Janet. Karen. Carla Sofia Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenya Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you. Marian Scarlett. Marian? No. Um, Marina Jensi. Marina. Mauricio Antonio. Yes, yeah, so present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Libet. Yeah, so let present. Now. Thank you. Norma Patricia. Yeah, Norma said that she's going to be as a listener. Pablo Adalberto. Yeah. Present. Um, thank you. Tatiana Yvonne. Present. Thank you. Wendy Maricela. And Jonathan Roberto. Present. Thank you. Okay, guys. So, yes. Let's see. I'm going to create the breakout rooms. Let me see. Okay, thank you, Norma. Let me give you access for you to share the screen as well. Okay. Okay, let's go, guys. Yeah. 
Voy a, a abrirlo en otro. Sí. Oye. Esta. Here. Aquí. Ah. Uh, okay. The yeah. uh, the rainforest in Brazil is the most amazing place. No, sería the rainforest is the most amazing place in Brazil. Is the in Brazil. Brazil. In Brazil. Brazil. Uh, China. Mm -hmm. China has some of the largest cities in the world. China has some of the largest. Mm -hmm. China. Is the largest. Okay. Is the largest. Mm -hmm. Ah, sí. Uh -huh. Largest. Largest. Uh -huh. The pronunciation, okay? Largest. Yeah. Largest. Largest. Mm -hmm. Largest. No largest, largest. 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 Uh -huh. largest. Switzerland in the world. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Switzerland. All right. Switzerland is the richest countries in Europe. Okay. Ghana is um, the most interesting place to visit in West Africa. Okay. Japan has the most beautiful cherry blossom in the spring. Argentina. Okay. The, 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 the south of Argentina? I think it is the south of Argentina. Oh, sí, sí. No. Uh, the South of Argentina has the coolest weather in the country. Has the coldest weather in the country, Yes. 
Uh, Egyptian pyramid are, are the most famous monuments. The south of Argentina. Argentina. Has, Has the... the coldest weather in the country. Yes. Has the coldest weather. In the country. The the uh, Egyptian pyramids. <laughs> Are the most famous monument in the world. The, the tacos, the tacos, uh, tacos are the nice, nicest food in Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Hello, teacher. Hello. Por aquí? Oh, okay. You didn't ask for help. No lo había visto que estaba solo. Okay, terminó. Eh, solo cuatro hice porque hice una captura de pantalla, pero las otras no las hice. No, la, no las encontró. No. Bye. Ok. So, let's see. Creo que ya terminamos. Ok, let's go to the main room, ok? Ok. Thank yes. You. Okay, guys, let's continue. Okay, so let's see. Number one, what is the correct sentence? The rainforest is the most amazing place in Brazil. Perfect. Yes, the rainforest is the most amazing place in Brazil. Excellent. Number two. China as some somewhat uh, larger city in the world. Yes, very good. China has some of the largest the cities larger city in the world. Yes, okay. With this one, guys, uh, make sure you say largest, okay? Large, largest. Largest. Yes. Okay. Number three. Switzerland is the richest country in Europe. Perfect. Number four. Uh, 
Havana is the most interesting place to visit in the West Africa. Perfect. Very good. Excellent. Okay, number five. Japan, Japan has the most beautiful cherry blossom in the spring. Perfect. Okay. Number six. The south of Argentina has the coldest weather in the country. Perfect. Number seven. Mm -hmm. The Egyptian pyramids yes. are the most are monuments that are the most famous monuments in the world. Excellent. Okay. So the Egyptian pyramids are the most famous monuments in the world. Perfect. Number eight. The nicest food in Mexico are tacos. Okay. The nicest food in Mexico are tacos. Okay. Yeah. It is valid. Okay. Very good, guys. Now let's move and we are going to take the listening quiz. Okay. Let's move and we are going to take the listening quiz. So let me get it for you if you are not on the spreadsheet, but if you are there, let's click on listening practice, okay? So there you go. This is the link and the passcode as always, listen, okay? All capital letters. Let me, um, let me get the, The audio, okay. So once you are in, let me know so I can play the recording and I'm going to play it three times, okay? Just for you to, to get um, the idea of the, of the listening. Okay, ready? Ready, teacher. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Okay, guys. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Dave, I'm going to the supermarket to pick up food and drink for Saturday's picnic later. Any suggestions? Well, everyone's been talking about having a barbecue down by the river, so why don't you pick up some hamburger and hot dogs? Okay, but how much hamburger meat are we going to need? And hot dogs, too? Uh, I don't know. How about three pounds of hamburger and a couple packages of hot dogs? Oh, that's not going to be enough. Do you remember the last picnic we went on? Mm. Your roommate Jim ate about 10 hamburgers by himself. <laughs> You're right. Let's see. I better write this down. Uh, let's see. About 9 pounds of hamburger meat and uh, 7 packages of hot dogs. And you better pick up some chicken for those who don't like hamburger or hot dogs. Okay. How about 5 or 6 bags of potato chips? Mm, better make that 8 or so. All right. Oh, and we're going to need some hamburger and hot dog buns. How about five packages of peas? I think that sounds about right. Yeah, you better pick up some mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise, too. Okay, what else? Uh, we're going to need some soft drinks. How about ten of those big two-liter bottles? Sounds fine, but be sure to buy a variety of drinks. Okay, and what about dessert? Well, maybe we could ask Kathy to make a few cherry pies like she did last time. Well, I wouldn't mind that, but you know she's been very busy working two jobs, so I'd hate to ask oh, her. Mm. And, uh, hey, why don't you whip up some of your oatmeal cookies? Well... Hey, you could even ask, uh, what's your name? Yeah, the hmm? new girl, Susan, the one that moved across the street. Well, I bet she'd be willing to help you. I don't know. She's a real knockout. Nah, I don't think I could ask her. Uh, I don't know her phone number. Plus... Hey, you don't need to. She's at the door. What do you mean? Well, I thought you two would hit it off, so I called her up saying I was you, and I invited her over to watch a movie. You did what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh. Okay, guys. This is the second time. 
Dave, I'm going to the supermarket to pick up food and drink for Saturday's picnic later. Any suggestions? Well, everyone's been talking about having a barbecue down by the river, so why don't you pick up some hamburger and hot dogs? Okay, but how much hamburger meat are we going to need? And hot dogs, too? Uh, I don't know. How about three pounds of hamburger and a couple packages of hot dogs? Oh, that's not going to be enough. Do you remember the last picnic we went on?、Mm. Your roommate Jim ate about ten hamburgers by himself. <laughs> You're right. Let's see. I better write this down.、Uh, let's see. About nine pounds of hamburger meat and、uh, seven packages of hot dogs. And you better pick up some chicken for those who don't like hamburger or hot dogs. Okay. How about five or six bags of potato chips?、Mm, better make that eight or so. All right. Oh, and we're going to need some hamburger and hot dog buns. How about five packages of peas? I think that sounds about right. Yeah, you better pick up some mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise, too. Okay, what else?、Uh, we're going to need some soft drinks. How about ten of those big two liter bottles? Sounds fine, but be sure to buy a variety of drinks. Okay, and what about dessert? Well, maybe we could ask Kathy to make a few cherry pies like she did last time. Well, I wouldn't mind that, but you know she's been very busy working two jobs, so I'd hate to ask、oh, her.、Mm. And、uh, hey, why don't you whip up some of your oatmeal cookies? Well, hey, you could even ask,、uh, what's your name? Yeah, the、hmm? new girl, Susan, the one that moved across the street.、Well, I bet she'd be willing to help you. I don't know. She's a real knockout. Nah, I don't think I could ask her. I, I don't know her phone number. Plus, hey, you don't need to. She's at the door. What do you mean? Well, I thought you two would hit it off, so I called her up, saying I was you, and I invited her over to watch a movie. You did what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait.、Uh, okay, the last time. Dave, I'm going to the supermarket to pick up food and drink for Saturday's picnic later. Any suggestions? Well, everyone's been talking about having a barbecue down by the river, so why don't you pick up some hamburger and hot dogs? Okay, but how much hamburger meat are we going to need? And hot dogs too? Uh, I don't know. How about three pounds of hamburger and a couple packages of hot dogs? Oh, that's not going to be enough. Do you remember the last picnic we went on?、Mm. Your roommate Jim ate about ten hamburgers by himself. <laughs> You're right. Let's see. I better write this down. Uh, let's see, about nine pounds of hamburger meat and、uh, seven packages of hot dogs. And you better pick up some chicken for those who don't like hamburger or hot dogs. Okay, how about five or six bags of potato chips?、Mm, better make that eight or so. All right. Oh, and we're going to need some hamburger and hot dog buns. How about five packages of peas? I think that sounds about right. Yeah, you better pick up some mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise too. Okay, what else?、Uh, We're going to need some soft drinks. How about ten of those big two-liter bottles? Sounds fine, but be sure to buy a variety of drinks. Okay, and what about dessert? Well, maybe we could ask Kathy to make a few cherry pies like she did last time. Well, I wouldn't mind that, but you know she's been very busy working two jobs, so I'd hate to ask、oh, her.、Mm. And、uh, hey, why don't you whip up some of your oatmeal cookies? Well, hey, you could even ask,、uh, what's your name? Yeah, the、mm. new girl, Susan, the one that moved across the street.、Well, I bet she'd be willing to help you. I don't know. She's a real knockout. Nah, I don't think I could ask her.、Uh, I don't know her phone number. Plus, hey, you don't need to. She's at the door. What do you mean? Well, I thought you two would hit it off, so I called her up, saying I was you, and I invited her over to watch a movie. You did what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait.、Uh... Okay, guys, submit your answers. Okay, let me see. Let me see your scores. Okay, most of you got one hundred. Okay. Perfect, very good. Okay, even though the listening was kind of、uh, fast, okay, but most of you got one hundred. Perfect. Okay, so now let's continue with the class and let's move to the book. All right. So let's continue with unit three, guys. Okay. So we have、uh, Gilbert and Laura. So please,、uh, Kenya, be Gilbert and Laura. Emerson. Yes. Um, Kenya, you are 
Gilbert? I am Gilbert, okay. Laura, how do you keep the schedule organized? My staff is always complaining. I use online service so that the staff can see their schedule from their phones. That's like the most efficient way. I bet it saves a lot of time. Yes, it is the best way to keep your staff organized on time. And on time. Okay, thank you. So that sounds like the most efficient, okay? Efficient way, I bet it saves a lot of time. What is the meaning of this expression, guys? If we say, I bet it saves a lot of time, what are we saying? Mm -hmm. I bet it saves a lot of time. It's like saying, yo apuesto, right? O apuesto a que te ahorra tiempo. Bet es apostar, okay? So now let me ask you guys. Well, I asked you this one yesterday. How does your company organize schedules? Yeah, we were talking about that one. But now let me ask you number two. In your opinion, what is the most efficient way to avoid overstaffing and understaffing? What do you think is the most efficient way to avoid that, guys? Overstaffing and understaffing. Mm -hmm. First of all, what is overstaffing? Mm -hmm. What do you think is overstaffing? Yeah, any idea? When the company have a, a lot of personal employees. Yes, when the company has a lot of employees, more than necessary, right? Mm -hmm. You are overstaffing. And understaffing is the opposite, right? Is the opposite, yeah? And in your opinion, guys, what do you think? What is the most efficient way to avoid Overstaffing and understaffing, which is the most efficient way, guys, for you to avoid that? Mm -hmm. My opinion is to the evaluation of the performance of the staff. Okay, very good. Yes. That could be a good method. Uh -huh. What else, guys? What is another way to avoid overstaffing and understaffing, in your opinion? Uh -huh. Sorry, Morris. With that? Because. Me? Yes. Uh -huh. For me, it's. Oh, I think that we cannot hear you, Morris. Uh, yeah. Perdón. No lo escuchamos. Uh, the more strategy is uh, uh, make a, a schedule in the plan. Okay. For, for yeah. Eh, para evitar, ¿cómo se dice? Oh, uh, to avoid. To avoid uh, uh, overstaffing and Understaffing. Understaffing. Okay, is to make a plan, right? 
Yeah. Yes, very good. Yes, that is correct, guys. I think that as Maury said, and also Emerson, right? So in this case, um, probably the best way is for you to create a plan, right? To have the detail of the schedules, right? In which you need to have more personnel, right? And so on. That is the most efficient way to avoid understaffing or overstaffing to mm -hmm. distribute, right? To distribute. That is correct. Okay, perfect. Let's move, right? So, um, Juan Jose, can you please help us reading uh, all of this? Okay, how to use superlative forms of adjectives. Look at the examples in the box. Use the superlatives form of adjectives to compare more than two persons or think in a group. Jack is the fastest server. That was the saddest moment in the shift. The busiest hour is during lunch. The most interesting customers come to our restaurant. The superlative form for one syllable adjective is made of the plus adjective plus EST, yeah. adjectives that are two or more syllables long use the plus most plus adjective for their superlative form. Kitchen managers have the best schedules. I usually receive the worst, the worst tips. Adjectives like good and bad are called called irregular adjectives because their superlative form do not follow the EST rule. rule. Perfect, okay, that was excellent, very good. So in this case, guys, um, you know, this is, I would say a summary of what we studied at the beginning, right? Is a summary. Basically, do not forget that with superlative adjectives, we need to use da plus the adjective plus est or da plus most plus adjective, right? And do not forget that we also have irregular adjectives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now let's continue with the exercises from the book. So let's try to underline the correct word or phrase. So we have number one, we have um, the most important thing is to find a substitute for sick employees. Mm -hmm. That could work, right, in a company. Okay, so what about number two? Don't use the best or the goodest? Which is the correct option? The correct option, option is use the best. Perfect, that is correct. So we need to use the best. Don't use the best as schedules as a reward. Well, okay. What about number three? Jane? is the fastest waitress perfect number four delivery orders are is the most popular right now okay this pronunciation with popular okay popular perfect number five this restaurant has the most pretty, pretty decoration. Mm, not exactly, Tatiana, because remember the adjectives that end with the letter Y? Ah, okay. Yes, so the prettiest. Mm -hmm. And the last one, the kitchen manager works the longest. The longest shift. And that is correct, right? Sometimes, yes, it is really 
um, hard, right? Okay, very good. Let's continue, okay? So it says, which of these strategies do you and your partner consider effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing? Um, okay, so Tatiana, help us reading from one to six. Okay, teacher. One, provide discussion to your employees quickly. Hmm. Fa find a method to communicate quickly with employees. Okay. Take working preference into account. Okay. Schedule having your employees stretch in mind. Okay. Allow for change in the schedule. Okay. Prevent a sentence using form remin remind reminder. Perfect. Thank you. Right. So we just have to improve on pronunciation on this one. Communicate. Communicate. Okay. Communicate. Communicate. Now say a strength. A strength. A strength. A strength. Now say reminders. 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 And then say absentism. 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 Okay. Absentism. Perfect. Like that. Very good. Okay, guys. So let me ask you, which of those strategies do you think or do you consider are effective? Mm -hmm. Overstuffing and understuffing to avoid that. For me, for me, number one, I discuss with your employee quickly. Okay, this one, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for the other ones? Allow for change, changes in the schedule. Yes, I think that this one is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that one and five are really important, right? But five, I think that is the most important because yeah, you need to allow for changes, right? If not, you are going to have overstaffing or understaffing. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right, guys. Now let's take the grammar quiz. And the grammar quiz is about superlative adjectives. Okay. Let me get that link for you so you can take that quiz. This is for you to practice comparative and superlatives. Okay. This is for you to practice both comparative and superlatives. And the passcode is going to be kind of different because it is English 2023, okay? So it is different from the, uh, from the previous ones. Okay, guys, so this one is for you to practice superlative and comparatives. Those are 15 questions. Okay, 15 questions. Once you are done, let me know because you are going to start with the speaking time, okay?
I don't. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Okay, I can see that some of you already finished, okay? So, okay. Okay, guys, so I'm going to move you to another breakout room so you can start practicing and speaking. Okay, the ones that already finished. Yeah, let me see. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nelly. Let me see. Okay. I don't know if if the most important, but is more important. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very important. But something do you need? Uh, 
another another kind to to motivation i think it, it's not only the salary but but the salary yeah definitely is is very important i don't know what is the the, the what's the meaning of, of reconocimiento means reward okay maybe uh uh, you need reward sometimes. So, yeah. so uh, things uh, intangible. I don't know is the is the, is the correct pronunciation. Intangible, yes. Intangible, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And the most important yeah. thing about the jobs is the salary. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> mm. More money, more money. Mm. First, for me, for me. Yes. And yours? Mm. I don't know. I met someone that prefers uh feel good uh over the money nothing nothing work for a free gratis uh, no, gratis no but, but the person that i met uh yes yes pre ma prefer yes, uh a job where the salary was less than the old work so for him the money wasn't too important over feel good in the job and the other one is it easy to get a job after graduation in a country no. Uh, no, always is difficult. Yeah. For me, it's difficult this moment in the country because I the, the company needs uh, experience. Experience. Mm -hmm. Experience. In la mayoría, como se dice, Tiche? In la mayoría. Uh, ¿En la mayoría de qué? En la mayoría de las compañías. Um, in most companies. In most companies. Mire experiencia. They need experience. They need experience. Experience. Okay. Uh, the other one. Yes, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, what is the most important subject in the school? Independent. The career. Carrera. It depends on the career. In the pen, in the body. Mm -hmm. Because by engineer, only important math. Only math. Only math. Mm -hmm. The personal, I think. Okay. And you? What is the most important subject in a school? Wow. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> um... Someone? 
<laughs> I, I I remember in uh, when I was a child, I remember it was math or maybe literature. But but I think I think um currently maybe about the idioms or languages Language. and languages and, and technology, I think. I think. Yes. Yes, do you have a reason? Yeah. Yeah. You are correct, okay? You are mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and maybe a subject about the life. <laughs> how yeah. the, how the key is the cooking. Uh, ¿Cómo sería? Mm -hmm. Basics. Basic. Like chores at home or basic probably knowledge about courses. <laughs> yes. Like officials, maybe? But, yes. Right now, you you can uh, study the many careers or different subjects. Yeah. Um, because, for example, in, in the high school right now, you can study um for for uh i i, I don't want to I, I say the um, uh hosteleria how do you mean and i don't know and and or or uh, you you can study for a nurse but a few years ago in the um, in the many high school only you you could study the basically and mm -hmm. right now you have a many a many subjects okay do you have any tips for giving a successful speech or presentation? Speech is hablar. Yes. Yes, speech is discourse. <laughs> Imagine all naked people. <laughs> okay. I, I but but if <laughs> but it's the opposite, right? Yes, but it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't be nervous and relax. Don't be nervous, yes, and relax. It may be, uh, don't see the people. <laughs> oh, why? Maybe see the wall and don't see the people. <laughs> okay. And what in presentation? Uh, it's about a, a resume, no. Oh, PowerPoint, for example, no. Eh, no, a presentation is the same, como una presentación, como una exposición. Uh, well, the, I think that the, the most important one is that you need to prepare yourself, right? Yeah. Yes, because if you if you are prepared, so you won't feel nervous, right? I mean, you will feel nervous, but not uh, afraid, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, guys, continue. You have any 
will be giving a successful speech or presentation. Any tips for giving a successful speech or presentation? Um, I think that uh, prepare the the topic or dialogue, no sé cómo se dice. Script. A script? Yes, a script. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And prepare topic or a script before and practice. Practice and see the horizon. <laughs> okay. <Not people. laughs> okay. Okay. Um, some tips for me is when we are talking or we are explain something use a uh, expression with uh, hands with a face and with some moves to try to explain something yes and that um you look secure about you talking yes yes teacher como se dice lenguaje corporal body language body language Yes, body okay. language, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. What is one of the most exciting jobs you can think of? And how about one of the most boring jobs? <laughs> um, the, most, uh, the most exciting job, I think that is a pilot. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I was thinking in a uh, astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and the most boring job I think is a uh, lawyer. <laughs> lawyer, okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, for me, I think in I don't know how to say someone is saving files como un archivista un archivero no no sé cómo se dice yes okay 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 our exam harder now why or why now why not exam harder now um depends what what is the sense <laughs> What topic or what exams? Yes. English. English. English exam. Um, Are exam harder now? Maybe compared with the last exams? Um, maybe it's um, easier than preview the exam because we have um, a, a lot of practice now. Or, yes, more technology. Yes. Okay. And which is worse for people's health, smoking or drinking and why? I think that a drink, no, smoking, <laughs> smoking, <laughs> smoking because, um, I don't know, I think it's most dangerous. <laughs> yes. But uh, depend, because <laughs> if, if the people driving, uh, drink, can die in the in one day in the first day <laughs> someone is drinking today today driving uh, have an yeah. accident die <laughs> yes it's worse but... yes in a long time i think that is smoking <laughs> correct yes yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. okay which is harder math or English. <laughs> uh, 
depend on <laughs> I think that it depend uh the methodology of the okay it depends on the methodology in the, okay depends of the methodologies yes methodologies that teacher have for teach the topic okay and the motivation that we have yeah yes maybe to if you like yes math or more than english or vice versa how do you say vice versa teacher ah uh, you can say or the other way around or the other way around okay yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like math. I was uh teachers math or math teachers. Uh, math, math teachers, math, yeah. Math, math teachers, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if you own a business, if it's more important to be good with numbers or be creative and why? In tu propio negocio? Yes. yes. Yeah. Depends. It depends what is a uh, business. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's both. Both. Um, in, in a business in general, I think that is uh, that you have to be good with mm -hmm. the numbers. That. Mm -hmm. I think that depends what what you work because if um, the work is a relationship with uh, designers or painting or create something, I think that the most important is the creativity. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the numbers uh, always are important in a business that is correct yes okay. the numbers always are in the business but the creative is important too to show your your product or something yes okay are some people luckier than others or do people make their own luck and why <laughs> I think that people make their own luck mm -hmm. with um, with our uh, attitude and the way that we see the life in general. Yes, if we are if we work hard. Tatiana, are you there? Tatiana? No, she's not there. Pablo, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. All right. So let me close all the rooms. Pablo, um, once we finish with the class, please stay with me, okay? Okay. Yeah. So we're almost done with the class, okay? Let me see. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay, 
So Carla, if you own a business, is it more important to be good with numbers or be creative? Mm. I think both. Okay. Because it's a business creative, creative. Uh -huh. I think it's more important creative, but uh, we need numbers. <laughs> uh -huh. So, but at the end, uh, which one do you think is the most important? Creativity? or numbers? Creativity for innovation. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because as I think that Juan was saying, you need to uh, actually show the product, right? Yes, because if you don't show the product in a creative way, you won't sell, right? So, I think that creativity is the most important. That's that's true. And which is harder, guys, math or English? What do you think? English. English, do you think that English is harder? Yes, at some point probably because, I mean, math can be taught in Spanish, right? But English is another language. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I agree, okay. All right, so, and the last questions, um, one, what is one of the most exciting jobs you can think of? And how about one of the most boring? The most exciting? What do you think? For me, it's a pilot. Pilot. Yes, because you're going to travel, right? So. Of course, it's another actually thing, right? So, and what about the most boring jobs? Um, archivist. <laughs> Ar yes, an archivist, right? Yes, I think that that one is one of the most boring jobs. Yes, guys. Okay, just because of the time, we are going to stop right here. Thank you very much for connecting today and being responsible, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Please, Pablo, stay with me, okay? You may go ahead and rest, guys. Take care. I'll see you back tomorrow, okay? See you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Good night. Take care, guys. Good night. Good night, guys. Take care. Let me see. Okay. All right. So, uh, Pablo? Yes. Okay. Pablo, we are going to have the feedback time. Yeah? Okay. Um, uh -huh. Today, I, I can... Oh, are you busy? The full class. No, today I can receive the full class. Okay. And I don't understand the oh. topic. <laughs> okay, all right, Pablo. So yes, well, I'm going to give you a brief explanation, okay, about what we covered today, yeah? So basically, Pablo, what we actually covered today was this. We cover superlative adjectives, superlatives. Do you remember about comparatives? Yes. I okay. Remember. Yes. So we cover superlatives. That was the main topic for today. Yeah. So yes. as you can see right here, Pablo, we have the superlative adjectives and the ones that are short, short adjectives. Um, if you remember, we have the rule that we have consonant, vowel, and consonant, yeah? So whenever we have this type of adjective, what we do with the superlative is that we add EST and we add the, so the fattest, yeah? 
So the biggest, the hottest, the saddest. But this one is the superlative. El más, el más caluroso, el más grande, el más triste. ¿Ya? Eh, en este caso no se, no se coloca... Eh, uh, El, ¿Cómo se llama el, el, la palabra más? Ah, ok. De, de no, correcto. En ese caso no, Pablo, porque son adjetivos cortos. Oh. Lo único que se hace con esos adjetivos que son cortos es que le agregamos el ISC y le agregamos el DA. Ok. Ok, okay. por ejemplo... Si queremos decir, eh, la ciudad más calurosa en El Salvador, por decirlo, es eh, San Miguel, ¿ok? El departamento, el más caluroso, ¿ok? ¿Cómo lo diríamos? The hottest city in El Salvador is San Miguel. Okay. Yeah. Then we also have the ones that end with the letter Y, tenemos lo que terminan con la Y, que a eso, si se acuerda, le cambiamos la Y por una I latina, y en este caso, como son superlativos, le ponemos IST. Ok. ¿Ya? Por ejemplo, el día más feliz de mi vida fue ahora, por decirlo. So, the happiest day of my life was today. Okay. ¿Mm? Sí. Y también lo que usted me preguntaba. Sí tenemos a los que les agregamos the most, pero son a los adjetivos largos. Okay. Uh -huh. A los cortos, no. Acuérdense. Entonces, a los largos sí le agregamos the most. Por ejemplo, the most important, the most expensive, the most delicious, etc. Siempre ¿Sí? es cuando eh, son eh, palabras de más de una, eh, de más de dos eh, sílabas. Eh, perdón, sílabas, sí. Correcto. Okay. Sí. Uh -huh. Entonces, también cubrimos el día de ahora los irregulares. Si se recuerda, tenemos adjetivos irregulares. Entonces, ya good se convierte en the best. Bad se convierte en the worst. Little se convierte en the least. Much, the most. Far, the farthest. Uh -huh. Okay. Bien, eso fue básicamente lo que cubrimos el día de ahora. Vamos a hacer unos ejercicios para ver si um, hemos comprendido un poquito la lección. Ok, Pablo. Si se fija, el número uno dice: John is the tallest person in his family. Ese es el adjetivo que está en paréntesis. Ok, por eso utilizamos okay. the tallest. Number two, Pablo, ¿cómo sería? Sería: Saturday is the best. Day to go Day shopping. To go shopping. Perfect. Number three. Chinese is the most difficult language in the world. Excellent. Number four. Uh, is the hardest. The hardest. Most, hardest. The month of the year. Exactly. And number five. Juliet is the most beautiful woman I know. Excellent. Ok. Sí se, se fija que es básicamente el superlativo. Aquí no se compara. Sí, sí. Okay. ok. Ok. Eso es básicamente lo que vimos el día de ahora. Ah, ok. Ya queda más, más claro. Porque si no, por, por, por todo lo que me pasó, si no. Ok. Ok, sí, no, no, no comprendía, no, 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 uh, cabal como no. Quedaron, sé. quedaron dudas, muchas dudas. Ok, bye.
Ok, pero vale. bien, espero que con eso pues ya más o menos vayamos como um, tal vez um, comprendiendo un poquito el tema, ¿verdad? Ok, eh, Pablo, en este caso es bien importante para nosotros saber acerca de su opinión de nuestras clases, del módulo intermedio, de esas dos semanas uh -huh. que hemos tenido eh, queremos saber cómo se ha sentido, eh, qué le ha parecido la dinámica del módulo intermedio 1. Quisiera también saber cuál es su background en el inglés, si ha estudiado con nosotros desde principiante 1 o es primera vez que está con nosotros eh, o si ha tenido la oportunidad de estudiar en algún otro lugar eh, que nos lo pueda comentar. Eh, Pienso que es... Eh... He estado de principiante uno. Okay. Eh, no, no he tenido la oportunidad de estudiar en ningún otro lugar, ¿verdad? Ok. Especialmente hasta ahorita que, que ya me interesé un poquito más de lleno en, en okay. querer estudiar el inglés. Okay. Y aprenderlo. Porque sí. Ya creo que por, por eh, un poquito falta de tiempo. Eh, eh, Queda, queda muy poquito tiempo para poder este, repasar algunas cosas ¿verdad? por cuestiones de trabajo. Sí. Ahí es donde queda un poquito corto, pero sí, más que todo es eh, ser un poquito constante. ¿verdad? Sí. Para, para okay. poder aprender. Ok. Ok, ahora de, eh, de nuestras clases, ¿cómo se ha sentido en este módulo intermedio? Y aquí como ha estado desde principiante uno, tiene un indicio de cómo han sido eh, previamente con nuestra clase, ¿cómo se ha sentido? Sí, vaya, hay bastantes eh, variantes en cuanto a, a los demás teachers, a la mo modalidad que usted ejecuta, ¿verdad? Muy, hay bastantes variantes, ¿verdad? Cada uno okay. tiene su, su, su manera, su forma de, de, ¿cómo se llama? De enseñar. Correcto. Y este, eh, sí, eh, como les repito, como todos son eh, diferentes en su modalidad de enseñanza, este, no, pero siempre eh, tratan de adaptar la enseñanza a la, creo que a la velocidad de aprendizaje de cada uno, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, a algunos nos cuesta más que a otros, porque sí, yo sé que hay muchas cosas que a mí se me dificultan. Y es, pues, más que todo, el, el ser un poquito expresivo en cuanto a, a poder hablarlo. Uh -huh. Entonces, okay. este, en, eso es la, la barrera que yo ahorita debería de poder ir este, eliminando, ¿verdad? básicamente. Correcto. Y eso se consigue con práctica constante, que es lo que tengo que empezar a hacerle tiempo para esto. ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. Pero sí, es bastante, bastante dinámica su manera de, de enseñar. Ok, Pablo. Bien. Eh, eh, como usted lo mismo lo ha comentado, en realidad, eh, cada módulo, ¿verdad? Tiene su grado también de dificultad. Es bien importante mencionar que estamos en el primer módulo intermedio el cual debe de ser eh, una puerta para que ustedes vayan teniendo un indicio de cómo va a ser intermedio 2, intermedio 3, 4 y que ustedes se vayan adaptando. Porque en, este, eh, en, en los intermedios, pues ya el idioma inglés es esencial que lo utilicemos durante toda la clase. Tal vez en los eh, a módulos anteriores probablemente ¿verdad? hemos mezclado español e inglés y por supuesto que la clase se ha sentido tal vez eh, un poco más liviana, ya que supongo que es un cambio eh, grande el cual han tenido algunos de ustedes porque varios vienen de principiante con nosotros. Entonces en este caso la clase se ha diseñado para que ustedes puedan, obviamente porque la meta 
¿verdad? De intermedio uno de mi clase es que usted aprenda y que obviamente también desarrolle, como usted mismo lo mencionó, y se vaya quitando la barrera del miedo a hablar, del miedo a equivocarse, porque en ocasiones lo que sucede es que tenemos miedo, nos cuesta expresarnos, pero si nos, nos forzamos a nosotros mismos a salir de nuestra zona de confort, nunca vamos a salir y vamos a ir avanzando intermedio 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, y cuando lleguemos avanzado, probablemente nos vamos a topar con otro maestro que es incluso un poco más dinámico eh, y que usted va a estar hablando todas las dos horas. Entonces, es bien importante que nos vayamos soltando un poquito, como usted lo ha dicho, ¿verdad? Las clases son diseñadas para que todos se puedan eh, soltar en, en ese sentido de que no tengan miedo ni pena. Es pues normal que al principio ustedes lo tengan, ¿verdad? Porque tenemos miedo de equivocarnos, ¿verdad? O las ideas no nos fluyen súper rápido. Entonces, pero es ahí donde entra el papel de estudiante. ¿Qué hacemos para forzarnos a nosotros a salir de la zona de confort? ¿Verdad? Entonces es bien importante, eh, Pablo, eh, mencionar pues que me gustaría ver lo que participe más, ya que si no participamos es muy pero muy poca la probabilidad que como maestros tengamos la oportunidad de poder corregirlos. Y el, um, pues, básicamente por lo cual estamos nosotros acá es para corregirlos, es para que ustedes puedan hablar mejor el idioma. Entonces, a través de la práctica, como usted mismo me lo ha dicho, ¿verdad? Es como lo vamos a lograr. Entonces, eh, quisiera, pues, que usted participara un poquito más en las clases escucharlo un poco más participativo sin embargo eh, cuando usted lo ha podido hacer lo ha hecho porque yo lo he escuchado y pues yo observo a todos mis alumnos verdad quien participa tratamos de adaptarnos a cada uno verdad y como eh, básicamente el proceso de aprendizaje usted lo mencionó también es muy distinto para todos por eso se trata de mezclar speaking si usted se fija se trata de incorporar lectura se trata de incorporar gramática de todo verdad ejercicios para los que aprenden viendo para los que aprenden escuchando para los que aprenden haciendo entonces se trata de eh, acoplar a todos los estilos de aprendizaje que ustedes puedan tener como estudiantes entonces, tal vez nada más eh, eso, ¿verdad? De su parte, que po a, pueda participar un poquito más y estar presente en la clase, ¿verdad? Para que eh, vayamos saliendo de esa zona de confort y que usted también se vaya sintiendo, pues, eh, más cómodo en la clase y con el proceso de aprendizaje, porque esa es la meta, ¿verdad? Okay. Eh, yo lo motivo, ¿verdad? Que usted siga aprendiendo a que siga pues eh, estudiando, no sé si estudia eh, fuera del salón de clases, es decir, en su tiempo libre, si usted le dedica tiempo al idioma, pero eh, es bien esencial que también le pueda dedicar un poquito de tiempo al idioma, ¿verdad? para que vaya adquiriendo más vocabulario también, ¿sí? sí. No sé eh, si... Fíjense que, eh, disculpe, hay, eh, fíjense que hay una pequeña eh, duda respecto a... a... ¿Cómo podría yo ir avanzando más en el aprendizaje? ¿verdad? Sí. Eh, por mi parte, no lo ha, voy a ser sincero, no lo hago frecuentemente, pero sí, digamos, unas dos, tres veces por semana. Eh, yo escucho algunos eh, audios en Spotify. Okay. Entonces, siempre eh, concerniente al, al, al inglés. ¿verdad? Entonces... Okay. Más que todo para querer empezar a adaptar mi oído. Porque parte es un poquito de mi problema es eh, en cuanto a poder eh, discernir algunas palabras. Entonces, eh, no sé si habrá algún otro tipo más efectivo ¿verdad? Eh, de poder adaptarme más, o sea, no sé si usted me podría aconsejar alguna metodología un poquito más fácil que podría encontrar, digamos así, como hoy en, en internet se encuentra casi de todo. Sí. No sé si, si habría alguna, algo que podría yo a, a hacer extra para poder adaptarme más fácilmente. Sí, 
Fíjese de que en realidad hay bastantes eh, aplicaciones que podría usted utilizar. No sé si tiene Duolingo, es muy bueno. Ahora, uh -huh. si lo que usted, eh, pues creo que el objetivo es que usted pueda hablar. Que, que no tenga miedo de expresarse o que las palabras le fluyan un poco más rápido. Entonces, ¿qué tiene que hacer? Tiene que hablar con usted mismo en inglés. Yo sé que a veces no es posible porque pasa ocupado, ¿verdad? No es que se vaya a dedicar 10 eh, minutos a estar hablando con usted solito en inglés a, a cada hora, no. Tiene que hacerlo cuando usted se va a dormir o cuando usted se levanta. Cuando usted se va a dormir es un poco más factible porque cuando se duerme al menos tiene unos 5 o 10 minutos que pasa tal vez como pensando en algo o si no se puede quedar 10 minutos pensando en lo siguiente. Puede hacer preguntas en inglés, ¿verdad? Puede decir, ok, what did I do today? ¿Qué hice ahora? Y empieza usted a desglosar todo lo que usted hizo el día de ahora en inglés. Por supuesto, van a haber frases que usted va a decir, ok, no sé cómo se dice esto. Y ahí es donde usted no se debe de parar. Debe de continuar, ok, mañana lo voy a buscar. Y sigue con la siguiente idea. Y se va a ir dando cuenta que tal vez ahí, ok, no sé cómo se dice esto. Lo busca también. Entonces, al siguiente día, lo busca. Y ya en la noche vuelve a hacer el mismo ejercicio y ya va a saber cómo se decía lo que tal vez no sabía cómo se decía el día anterior. Pero eso es de tener disciplina. Entonces, eh, tiene que hacerlo de esa manera para que usted vaya adaptando su cerebro a que piense en inglés. También puede preguntarse más cosas, ¿verdad? Puede decir, ok, so what am I going to do tomorrow? ¿Qué, ¿Qué son las cosas que voy a hacer mañana? Ok, I am going to go to work. I am going to call my client. I am going to visit the client. Cualquier cosa que usted vaya a hacer mañana. ¿Sí? Entonces, para que usted vaya adaptando su uh, manera de pensar primeramente, ¿verdad? Y luego, también con lo del listening, lo que yo le puedo recomendar es que, número uno, eh, si usted tiene Spotify, como usted me dijo, eh, sí, busque audios en Spotify. Ahí, eh, ahí es, hay mucho, mucho, pero mucho material para que usted pueda aprender. Si por lo contrario a usted le gustaría estar escuchando y también leyendo lo que se está escuchando, yo le recomiendo que entonces mejor busque videos en YouTube. Eh, en YouTube hay muchos videos de cualquier tema que a usted le guste. Y también hay unas páginas, no sé si usted sabe de, de estas charlas, hay unas páginas eh, donde usted, eh, se, la, se lo voy a mandar en este momento. En esta página hay bastantes charlas. Entonces, eh, déjeme, le voy, a, le voy a mostrar para que usted vea. Y acá... Eh, se llama TED Talk. No sé si las has escuchado alguna vez, eh, que son como charlas educativas o, o de cualquier tema. Fíjese bien, esta página se la voy a mandar también por aquí para que la pueda abrir y la tenga. En esta página, cuando usted se vaya a dormir, también lo puede hacer. Fíjese, aquí usted busca por duración. Si usted no tiene tanto uh -huh. tiempo no tiene tanto tiempo, le pone de 0 a 6 minutos. Entonces hay videos de 5 minutos, de 4, de 4, de 2. Si usted se fija, hay bastantes bien cortos y son de temas bien, bien interesantes. Y aquí usted le pone inglés, porque hay en todos los idiomas. Ay, ay, ay. Entonces y le pone la duración de 0 a 6 minutos, porque para que no sea tanto, ¿verdad? Y si usted, digamos, sí. quiere eh, saber acerca de de dinero, ok, money entonces aquí le van a aparecer todos los videos relacionados al dinero entonces usted le da el clic, ok en, en el video y le va a aparecer eh, creo que si, si le enseño acá, no sé si por el copyright por el derecho de, de autor no, no nos va a dejar subir ese video a YouTube okay. Entonces, por eso no se lo puedo enseñar así, pero cuando usted le dé clic al link, 
eh, va a poder eh, ver el video con los subtítulos en inglés. Okay. Entonces, eh, y de esa manera usted puede también incrementar su listening, escuchando cosas que para usted sean interesantes, ¿verdad? Y eh, que no sean tan extensas, porque e incluso los videos de esas charlas son bien eh, creativos, entonces no lo van a aburrir. Entonces, okay. eh, también eso le puedo recomendar. Y pues escuche música en inglés, trate de cantar canciones en inglés, porque eso sirve bastante para la fluidez para la fluidez. En, uh, enfóquese en una canción que le guste bastante en inglés y descargue la letra y cántela todas las veces que usted quiera hasta que le salga perfecta. Y va a ver cómo su, también el speaking le va a ir mejorando. Pero son cosas que debemos hacer con disciplina. Sí, sí, exacto. Sí. Hay que ser más constante. ¿verdad? Correcto. La constancia es básicamente el, quizás la, la clave, una de las claves para aprender el idioma. Bueno. Sí. Vaya, Pablo. Entonces, eso es lo que yo le puedo aconsejar, pero de ahí le puedo recomendar también. Eh, por eh, lo contrario, ¿verdad? En este caso, si tiene algún, alguna duda, bueno, como en este caso de, del tema que no pudo estar como la clase completa, Siempre pregunte para que no se quede con la duda. Y eh, no sé si tiene algún problema con la plataforma. Eh, dice que sí tuve un problema con una de las tareas. Uh -huh. Creo que la mayoría de compañeros le, le mencionó sí. que hubo un, una tarea que se escribía eh, como debía haber sido la, eh, la oración. Pero la plataforma no la acepta, sí, se puede formarte como error. Sí, fíjese de que eso ya se reportó, ellos están trabajando en eso, pero todavía no se ha solventado porque sí me han mencionado todavía que siguen teniendo el mismo problema. Sí, en muchos casos así, así ha pasado, eh, que hay respuestas que eh, según lo que hemos entendido de la clase, la... La hacemos en la, en la plataforma, pero lo toman de manera diferente. Sí. Entonces, y y ahí, ahí es donde se surge cierta, cierta duda, donde uno dice, lo hice bien o lo hice mal, ¿verdad? Sí. Pero sí, y cuando vi que los demás le empezaron a, a, a mencionar eso, y que sí, no era ahí. <risa> ok, Pablo. Sí, en realidad eso ya se reportó. Entonces ellos están trabajando en eso, ¿verdad? Para poder solventarlo, pero todavía no, no se ha solventado. Entonces, pero sí, ustedes lo están haciendo bien, ¿ok? Pero la plataforma es la que básicamente se tiene que actualizar. Entonces, ah. eh, eso ya se reportó, estamos trabajando en eso y pues esperamos que pronto podamos resolverlo, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes puedan eh, realizar el ejercicio y vean que estaba bien lo que ustedes estaban haciendo. Ajá, porque incluso yo hice el meter y, y este, lo hice completo, ¿no? Ok. Creo que no, no, no ese sí no, 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 sí tuve errores, pero eh, como No le dio corregir, problema. Pero, ajá. ajá, sí, okay. pero sí, este, solo es, es esa eh, oración que, que, habíamos, que teníamos que hacer, ¿verdad? Pero sí, siempre marca error. Vaya, Pablo, entonces si eso, pues... Eh, Gracias por mencionármelo, porque en realidad vamos a, a darle seguimiento también para que se pueda solventar, ¿verdad? Lo más antes posible. Bien, Pablo, no sé si tiene alguna otra pregunta, alguna duda, algo más que agregar, algo que me quiera comentar. Por el momento creo que no, pero eh, si surgiera algo, la voy a molestar. Vale, perfecto, Pablo, con gusto. Sí. Bien, entonces, Pablo, eh, vamos a dejar hasta acá el feedback. Espero de que eh, pase buenas noches. Ok, gracias por ser responsable. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Ok. Gracias. Ok, thank you. Bye bye. Buenas noches.